Hi, welcome to my next Monday Bible. My today guest is Mark Lauritsen, president of Capstone Practice System, but also the author of papers on AI writing for over 30 years. Mark, it's great you're here. Great to be here, Mikael. You are writing on legal tech for over 30 years. How it changed during these years? Were your predictions close to what is right now? I began getting involved in legal technology back in around 1984. I was a clinical teacher at Harvard Law School, and we got a big grant to look into technology of law practice, including AI. And so uh, I'm kind of self-taught by being involved in that process. I've made predictions. I think until recently, they weren't coming true. I mean, the legal profession was kind of slow to adopt technology and change. But as you know, we're in the middle of an explosion of innovation. And so it may be happening more rapidly <laughs> than it did back in the early days. How do you envision the role of AI in the legal field in a few decades? I think, as most agree now, legal work is getting performed by machine more, more than ever, and I expect that trend to continue. We've been knocked over by the large language models and all of their improvements recently. But I think the next wave we're going to see in the next couple of years is what we call neurosymbolic, where we combine traditional artificial intelligence symbolic reasoning with these now large language models or stochastic parrots, as sometimes they are called. I think that combination is going to be even more powerful. So it's a challenge both for the profession and for the legal education world. Uh, as you know, I Moonlight is a law professor. I teach courses trying to involve students, expose them to this new technology, but also to focus on very old traditional skills like making good decisions and being a good counselor and thinking critically. And so I expect that those kind of disciplines are going to grow in importance as a lot of traditional legal work, generating documents and doing routine information processing gets taken over more and more by our artificial minds that we're building in the laboratories. How should we, older lawyers, learn uh, about AI? Good question. I think in some ways, the same way as law students. I mean, to me, the most powerful technique is to actually get your hands involved in building things. And so I do these what we call maker style courses where students build applications as part of their coursework. And I think any age lawyers, even people as old as me, can learn a lot by building and attempting to build things and combining it with traditional topics. I think, as I may have told you before, I teach a course on Shakespeare and knowledge technology and where I, I try to use a very old body of literature and combine it with the latest techniques and tools. And I think that combination is where there's going to be a lot of attention and interest, in, and it's true for lawyers of any age. I think law schools should, should spend more time providing educational content to lawyers, uh, but that's a, whole other, that's a whole other topic. And would you attract lawyers to learn coding as well? That's a tricky question. I, I personally think that learning coding to some degree is a healthy intellectual process. It's but it's not necessary. I don't think lawyers need to learn coding. I think it's a it's a it's a benign, useful discipline just to, to focus your mind on on organized, structured thinking about computational problems. But uh, it's if you're not interested in coding, I would say don't bother because it's 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 not going to be very pleasant. Okay, and uh, where do you see challenge for for this year or next year? Hmm. I think there's there, there's a, an incredible level of general interest. There are a lot of self-proclaimed experts right now on artificial intelligence. I kind of sit back and watch because I've been through this so many times. You get a little cynical about uh, how rapidly the world is going to change. I think it is going to continue to change, but I think we're, we're at the moment we're a little overexcited. And it'd be healthy to in interject some uh, patience and and reasonableness into the into the current environment. And what would you answer to the people that are scared about uh, the future of their profession, young lawyers or, or even older lawyers who don't know what, what happens? I think there's a legitimate reason for fear because the world is changing and traditional law practice and traditional legal education I think has a limited shelf life. I, I think we're, we're in for, for rapid change. So my best advice is pay attention and be flexible and be prepared to take on some uncomfortable challenges don't don't expect the road ahead to be smooth it's going to be it's going to be rocky i think for many of us over the next decade or two i know your path so far it was also quite flexible you changed your roles a few times so how was it in your position yeah i'm just a i'm, I'm kind of a migrant i enjoy dancing among different disciplines 
And so I think stay alert to opportunities. Don't be afraid to jump into new fields that may momentarily seem uninteresting, but could be significant for the future. Okay, great advice. We shouldn't be afraid of changes. It's the, the best takeaway yeah. from, from this. I'll, I'll go with it. Thank you. Thank you.